Hello, I'm Connie Tipton, President and CEO of the International Dairy Foods Association. I'm here to give you a sneak peek at our Chairman's Lecture for Dairy Forum 2015. My guest today has spent his entire political career making a difference. Whether rallying support and financial aid for the victims of Hurricane Katrina, ensuring the cleanup of the Gulf Coast after the massive Gulf of Mexico oil spill, or strategizing the largest congressional power shift in 40 years, he has been an effective advocate for his constituents and a tenacious agent for change. I am joined today by Haley Barber, former governor of Mississippi, former chairman of the Republican Governors Association, and one of the most effective political strategists in the nation. Governor Barber, thank you for joining me today. I know our members are looking forward to your talk at Dairy Forum. Connie, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Governor Barber, you have an impressive record of accomplishments, and you've attributed much of your success to experience as a chief executive, saying governors get paid to get things done. But you've always gotten things done, so you must find it particularly frustrating with the stalemate we've got in Washington. What do you think it's going to take to get our leaders leading again? Well, it does take leadership, and, and the Speaker of the House can't lead the country. The, the majority leader of the Senate can't lead the country. The President of the United States is the only person that can lead the country, and we're not getting that leadership. We have seen it time and time again from him even talking about leading from behind internationally. We've got to have a president who leads. You know, I'm a Republican. Ronald Reagan in divided government led, but Bill Clinton, a Democrat, in divided government, he led. So to get real leadership has to come from the top, it has to come from the president, and I hope the next president understands that clearly. You know, a lot of our members are actively supporting candidates in these midterm elections. What do you see as the challenges and opportunities facing the newly elected 114th Congress? Will we see more polarization or will we actually get something done? Well, there are big challenges. There are big challenges about economic growth, of which we've had so little. Half the people in America say they can't tell we're out of a recession, think we're still in a recession. Uh, median family incomes down about 5% since 2007. So economic problems, international problems, the war on terror. So Congress is going to come up here with a full platter and partially because so little got done on the budget and the deficit and all that in the last, in the last Congress. So they've got to come to town ready to work. And if we have an all Republican Congress, it will make it easier because they can work together, put things on the president's desk. What we've had is the House Republicans pass bills and they never see the light of day in the Senate. They're never taken up. And for our process to work, everybody has to put in their part. We have to have compromise on things. You're not going to get everything you want. Everybody doesn't agree with Haley Barber on everything. But you know, Ronald Reagan, my old boss, compromised on every piece of legislation because we had a big Democratic majority in the House every day that he was president. These guys have to come up here to understand it. We're not going to cram it down the other side's throat like they did Obamacare down ours, and we shouldn't. But I do think attitude is a very important part of it, and I'm hopeful that we will come back with a better attitude because the country needs us to get things done. Governor, as you know, immigration reform is an important issue for the dairy industry, and we appreciate the leadership you've provided on immigration. If you could have it your way, write the bill, get Congress to pass it, and the president to sign it, what would that look like? Well, first of all, it's very important. This has got to be done legislatively. You, you cannot do things by executive fiat like the president has attempted and solve these problems. It takes legislation. Uh, I think there will probably be a comprehensive package of bills, not one. And that's, I am for comprehensive immigration reform. We got to secure the border. We promised the American people in 1986, and I was in the White House as political director when that bill passed. First promise we made the American people we're going to secure the borders. We hadn't. Republican administrations hadn't secured the border any more than Democrat administrations. Border security, the American people demand. They don't want to hear it promised again. They want to see that it's going to actually have to be done. Then we need to make immigration more about work. We need more workers in the United States. Agriculture needs workers. High tech needs workers. So uh, I am for moving the system to where there's more 
favoritism given to people who come here to work than for reunification, uh, and that's just a fact of the matter. Uh, finally, I think one of the things we have to understand is there are 11, 12 million people here illegally. We're not going to send them to jail. We're not going to send them all home. And frankly, there are three or four or five million of them have probably had the same job for years. Why would we send those good workers who are good citizens, why would we send them home when we ain't got anybody to replace them with? So immigration reform is a very broad and comprehensive issue. But those who have come here illegally, they're going to have to say, I admit I did it wrong, I pay a fine, I get put on probation, and if I continue to be a good citizen like many of the people that work in your industry, then I will ultimately have a chance to go through the regular channels to get a green card or to get citizenship. But I don't think there should be automatic citizenship. What there needs to be is people to go through the process. I did something wrong. I'm going to, I'm going to get right with the law. Then I'm going to be allowed to work, continue to stay here. And people are much more interested in that than they're interested in citizenship. The main thing is they want to be left alone, able to work, raise their families. And a good immigration reform bill, through the means I talked about, should result in that. As we head into the presidential election cycle, what one of the top issues is going to be the federal budget. During your gubernatorial tenure, you inherited a $700 million deficit, and you managed to bring the state of Mississippi back to the plus side without raising taxes. Where do you see potential presidential candidates taking their positions on the issue of the budget? I should say, Connie, when we talk about a $700 million deficit in Mississippi in 2003, that was a 20% budget deficit. It was a large percentage. We did it without raising taxes. Uh, America doesn't have these gigantic deficits and all this debt because we tax too little, it's because we spend too much. We've got to get control of spending. That's what we did in Mississippi in various ways. Nobody got thrown out of the nursing home. Nobody, the police cars didn't all get sold, but we got control of spending. We've got to do that here. And the federal government can do that. And there are many ways entitlement spending cannot go up as fast. We're not going to cut Medicare. We're not going to cut Social Security, but it can go up more slowly. And you can't imagine the 20 year savings that occur if, if Medicare spending only goes up 3% a year instead of going up 5% a year. Uh, it's, it's those kinds of things, but Washington describes a reduction in the rate of increase as a cut. Paul Ryan has introduced a budget where Medicare goes up, Social Security goes up, Medicaid goes up. They just don't go up as much as Obama's budget would make them go up. They go up about three and a half percent. His budget makes them go up. About, Obama's budget makes them go up about five point one percent. The American people understand that if the news media will let them hear it that way, but it's the spending side where we have to get control of our budget. Governor Barber, we look forward to hearing more of your ideas about how to tackle the challenges we face and transform them into opportunities. Thanks for a glimpse into what we might hear from you at the Dairy Forum. I hope you will join us January 25th to 28th at the Boca Raton Resort and Club in Boca Raton, Florida. See you then.